whatever that are not true. And then here it says, their word will eat as doth a what? Canker. That's cancer, is what that is. Okay? The word canker and cancer interchangeable. Okay? They, they have the same root and the same idea. Their word, and you stop thinking about this, and I've taught this in, in some of the things we put out, especially when it comes into DNA. When the DNA goes, when you've got DNA in one of your cells and, and it's going to grow a new cell, then an exact replica of your DNA goes from the old cell into the new cell. And if it does that and it's replicated perfectly, line upon line, then that cell will have healthy tissue in it. But if the DNA from the old cell gets transferred with errors into the new cell, that cell will not be what it was intended to be. It will turn into, guess what? Cancer. And see how right this Bible is. Back before they even knew what cancer of the body was, here is Paul through the Holy Ghost telling you that the wrong words will eat as doth a canker, as doth cancer. And so I believe that this Bible that I'm holding right here is the DNA, uh, the book of the life of Bethel Church. Can I hear Bethel Church say amen? If I were to bring something that was not exactly in accordance with this Bible into this church, I would be bringing cancer into this church. And instead of being alive, what would happen before too long, Bradley? We'd be dead. Oh, we might still be kicking around. We might have this little party every Sunday to look like we've got something. But we're eat up with cancer. Amen? Their word doth eat as a, as a canker, of whom is of Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth... Notice how, how God connects it together. Who concerning the truth have what? Erred. That means... Oh, that means so many things. That means their Bible has errors. This is what that means. That means their Bible... Their word concerning the truth, they have erred. And so this is why you will hear, uh, number one, so many other Bible translations. Number two, you'll hear, the, you'll hear the, um, the Master of Divinity who graduated from the seminary stand behind the pulpit and say, now, turn in your, turn in your Bibles to um, 2 Timothy. Now, in the original, in the original Greek, what, what actually was said here was... And they've introduced something that you're nodding your head. You've heard this, heard this sermon, haven't you? Okay? She's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, in the original Greek, what this really said was, and what they're telling you is, what you've got written on the pages of this Bible is not true. Let me introduce something else to you. That's dangerous. And I used to do it. My wife used to get all over me. When I was preaching, we had a little church out here at Richwoods, out here in the country. And I'd try to be smart and give them Greek lessons every Sunday, Wayne. Boy, she, used to, she said, would you stop doing that? I mean, I know my wife looks sweet, okay? But she can grit her teeth, okay? She's going, would you stop doing that? What? Tell that Greek stuff. They don't care about it. They don't understand that stuff. Boy, you used to make me so mad. I went to Bible college. She said, I know, we're still paying off the stupid student loans that you had. I didn't tell her that before we got married. All of a sudden, she got a bill in the mail. What is this? Student loan. For Bible college, borrowed a bunch of money to be full of cancer. Who concerning the truth have erred. And I'm here to tell you. God give me grace as long as I'm able to stand and breathe and speak. I will tell you that the truth does not have error in it. Amen. The truth does not have any error in it.
It doesn't. There, there are zero mistakes in this Bible. And so the, the trend that we're seeing, that a lot of you are seeing, and, and a lot of you, and I, I don't know the this, this story with all of you, a lot of people watching. The reason why they're watching this church is because they left the one they were going to. Because they were hearing that the truth had errors in it. And they said, we're not going to, we can't, we don't want this. Okay? Can I talk about your family for a minute? Why not? She does. Okay? According to, according to what she told me, it was these girls that came to her and said, Mama, we're, we're in a Bible memorization deal, and they're making us memorize verses out of the NIV, and we don't want to do that. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Okay? I'm telling you, God's still at work. Amen. He's still using some young people, and, and you pray for them. Amen. You, you pray for them. Pray for all these kids that are hearing the truth. That Because, in fact, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's just follow the Lord. Turn to Mark chapter 4 very quickly. I am going to get into the slides here before too long. Maybe tomorrow morning. Mark chapter 4. Let me show you what the devil will do. And I know I have this on a slide somewhere, but I, I want to get to it right now. Mark chapter 4. Um, in verse 4, the Bible says, And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And then when you look down um, in verse 15, you'll see who the fowls of the air are. And I just love the Bible because it will tell you what birds represent. It will tell you all the symbols of the Bible. It will tell you that what birds represent. What names, Think of something in the heavens that have wings. Okay? And uh, guess, guess what the devil has. Sure he does. He's a, he is described in the Old Testament as the fiery flying serpent. Okay? He's a dragon. He's a flying dragon is what he is. The myths are giving you somewhat of an accurate description. The verse 15, And these are they by the wayside where the word, that's the seed, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and doth what? Taketh away the word. You pray for these young people. Because the seed is being sown into the young hearts and the young minds. And what, does, what did, and what, I can tell you what the devil did with me. Was it was sown into me in this church. And the devil came and started trying to take it away. Okay? And I'm here, standing here, by the grace of God and nothing else. Amen. Okay? You want your kids to stand? Tell them to stand by grace, because they don't have anything else. Okay? But you pray for them, because the devil loves to take a church and take away the Word. He loves to take a family and take away the Word. He loves to take a whole denomination and take away the Word. That's his job. And he is flying around looking for seed everywhere to go and swallow it up. So that it has no chance to take root in people's hearts. Now, turn to the 70th chapter of the Bible. Genesis has 50 chapters in it. So, 50 plus what equals 70? This is 50 plus X equals 70. This is algebra. Okay, algebra, 50 plus X equals 70. So let's reverse the equation on both sides and cancel out and do all this stuff. And then you end up with Exodus chapter 20. And really, I just want us to look at the first verse. Verse 1, and count the number of words.
we get time. Uh, I don't know how tired everybody is, but I kind of I'm not hurting too bad now, and I kind of got a little second wind here, and uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay, uh, this begins the first written word of God. This was the first written word of God, written by God Himself with His finger. Amen. Okay. Do you think God made any mistakes in copying this manuscript down? Not one. Amen. And, and God proved it. See, when you write something, when you go to write something in stone, you better get it right the first time. Amen? Because there's no way to fix it after that. You remember Y2K, don't you? And all the computers were supposed to fail. You know, the biggest problem with Y2K was at the cemeteries. Because you had all these headstones that were, somebody had died, and they were waiting for the wife to die or the husband to die. And they had on their tombstone, you know, born November 1st, 1938, died, and they had 19, and they were, all they had to do was put in two little letters there. Well, after the year 2000, what do you do with that number 19 that's on that headstone? And the person ain't dead yet. And they were going, we don't know what to do with this. Because you cannot, you cannot, you cannot fill that in. It'll eventually chip out. You still always will have a 19 there no matter what you do. So they had a big problem with that. Anyway, God wrote them. That was the first copy there, all right? Corrupted. We don't have to worry. Kind of like when we were in Kenya and they had us a glass of water. Okay? And I, I asked, I, we, I asked, is this, is this purified water? Yeah. Okay. I have to ask, you know. Okay? Not trying to be mean or offensive, but I got to know what's in this. Okay? Well, I want to know what's in here. Amen. If it's not pure, I'm not drinking it. Words of the Lord are pure words. That's still. of the King James Bible. And you're going to like how this verse fits in with that. Purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them. Hundred and seventieth chapter of the Bible. Turn there. I, I don't even remember what it was. Um, Daniel. 